Thank you, Kevin. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Paul Public Schools. I am Joe Gothard, Superintendent of Schools, and I have to tell you that this morning uh, disappoints me greatly uh, to report that our SPFE educators are on strike. Our students aren't in their classrooms, and our staff aren't in their schools doing the work that they love. I know it wasn't an easy decision, and I know this because I've spent a lot of time um, with our bargaining unit from SPFE in the last six days and over the last several months in trying to negotiate a new contract. At 3 a.m. this morning, uh, talks ended, and they decided uh, that they were going to begin a strike. As someone who begins every day thinking about what the day is going to bring, today was a day like no other for me and many in our district, as we all know the history of uh, work actions in St. Paul Public Schools. This is not something uh, that happens often uh, for decades. We were notified 10 days ago that SPPS was provided the legal right to strike after a cooling off period. We knew that once that was in place, that we would have to come together and negotiate a new contract in good faith. We knew that time was going to present a barrier as you simply cannot have these discussions 24 hours at one time for several days in a row, although I think we tried to do that. Since May of last year, my team, and I have to recognize them, many of them are with us today, has been working and planning and working with our SPFE partners to negotiate this contract. We were provided parameters by our Board of Education for us to consider in vetting the many proposals that SPFE presented to us, again beginning in May. It's also important to mention that St. Paul Public Schools has more than 25 bargaining units and we apply the same parameters to each one of them. And the contracts are, are certainly different and, and each has a, a many different aspects to them for us to consider. But with 3,500 plus members, SPFE is certainly the largest. Our team began to understand the totality of their proposals beginning in May. And I have to say that the proposals that we received were from the heart. They were from a great place of research. They were based on supports that our students need. They were based on supports that can help our students and our communities thrive and they were based on priorities that have been priorities for many years by members of SPFE and the Greater St. Paul Public Schools community. Our team has to vet each one of the proposals and understand what it would mean to contract language and once that is done, what it would mean to overall costs or investments. Okay. An important part of the negotiating process understanding what our parameters are and how much has been presented to us from our partners. Once that is done, we attempt to prioritize to the best of our abilities. We attempt to be creative. We attempt to be respectful. We attempt to not put too much judgment on proposals so it isn't being seen as we are trying to determine where priorities are, are placed. We're trying to allow our partners to tell us where they would like us to invest in the resources that we have available. And at three in the morning, not that many hours ago, we learned that there's great distance between us. And I tell you right now that we are thinking about where can we strengthen and agree on where we're aligned. That, that has to be our pathway forward. And we also have to let go of some of the areas that we differ. And that is really hard to do, and especially hard to do when our backs are against the wall and we know that 37,000 students may not be in school today and in the indefinite future as it stands for right now. As a parent in St. Paul Public Schools, as the leader of St. Paul Public Schools, I will continue to work with my team I will continue to work with our Board of Education. I will stay in regular communication with our partners at 
the St. Paul Federation of Educators, and I will maintain connection with the State Bureau of Mediation Services who are guiding these negotiations uh, that are now in mediation. The goal is for us to have a settlement. A settlement would send a message to the St. Paul community that our doors are open for education. Our doors are open for all of our staff to come back. Our doors are open for our families to, to drop their students off and for our students to experience great days in any of our sites throughout the district. I also would like to say that a lot of these discussions have been based on um, extremely prolific issues happening in schools around the United States, in the state of Minnesota, and right here in St. Public, Public Schools. And that is the health and well-being of our students. That is how schools and communities come together to support them. And that has been some of the greatest passionate discourse that we have engaged in with SPFE again since May. But I also would like to say, while I agree we do need more support, we have incredible, incredible staff and professionals dedicated to this very work in St. Paul Public Schools right now. And I don't want that to be lost here. Many times we create um, a narrative that we need it because we don't have it. We do have great people in St. Paul Public Schools, but I think many of us would agree that many times needs of students outpace the staff that we have available. And that is a, that's a true reality. What it comes down to for us is how can we prioritize? How can we prioritize and continue to fund and invest in supports that our district needs and do it in a way that's sustainable. Some of the most difficult decisions I've had to make in education in the uh, recent past is when we develop great systems, great support, programs that are working where there is evidence and research to suggest what you're doing is benefiting students. They are increasing their long-term student outcomes and you have to come back year after year and say we can't do this anymore or we have to do less than in these areas. It is a frustrating cycle to be in and it certainly impacts what we're able to do when we come to the negotiating table because now priorities are competing. They're competing for available resources. St. Paul Public Schools has a huge budget, $800 million, second largest school district in the state of Minnesota and proudly the most diverse. And diversity to me is the individual needs that students have based on who they are and making sure that we can deliver on that each and every day. Diversity to me means that we look for creative solutions to make sure that our students' priorities are first and foremost um, how we are pledging to serve them each and every day. And as we went through proposals, we're down to about 12 that are remaining. Uh, with SPFE, there is incredible work left on that table. There is. And I'm here to tell you that if I could do everything on that table, if we could support everything, we wouldn't be having this news conference today or it would have a much different tone about that contract settlement that I held out hope for. So we have incredible work yet to do. We have two sides that have distance between them and how to get this contract settled. And I am committed to making sure we're aligning where we agree and that we begin to identify and let go of those areas that we differ. That's the way that we can come together. That's what this community expects from me. That's what the community expects from this process. Our community wants our kids in school. We are going to come together when the time is right we will find a way to get back to the table, and we will continue to negotiate this contract to settlement. With that, I'd be happy to take questions you might have. So mediation is conducted in private, and I think because of that, there's a mystique about it. Many of you can probably think what that might be like at 3 in the morning.
But there were two groups, two teams of dedicated educators, leaders, community members, parents there until that late hour, both doing the best work they could do representing their teams. And at three in the morning when you're coming together to share your passion, there's a different tone to it. And last night without exception because at 12.01, SPFE had a legal right to strike. And that was not lost on me. The totality of what that meant when we came together at that table was not lost on anyone in that room. That at any given time they could say, we're done, we are going to go to strike. And I think they would tell you, I'm not speaking for them, that it is the most serious decision that they would have to make as an organization, one that was not taken lightly. We worked as hard as we could to find compromise. We worked as hard as we could to say, these are the creative ways that we can come together and support one another's positions to settle this contract. And again, I'm incredibly proud of my team, um, the resolve that they showed, the way they work together, the way that we put all of our talents on the table and, and, and found ways to collaborate in, in ways that I haven't seen. As hard as it was at three in the morning, it was also a very proud moment to see that kind of work happen um, with, with what was at stake. We are still in mediation. So being in mediation means that there has to be one of the parties to request the other to come back to mediation. Uh, fair question, and I faced this this morning myself as my son's iPad was on the couch on my way out being charged. And I knew that it wasn't going to be used in school today, probably used at home. Um, but I've thought of that. I want to tell our parents that um, they place a lot of trust and faith in St. Paul Public Schools with the expectation that the Board of Education and the person that they hire, the superintendent, is going to do the very best that they can to ensure that every day is an opportunity for an excellent education. And that isn't happening today. And I want to tell our parents that I want to work as hard as I can to continue to negotiate our contract and get to settlement. Uh, there's been a lot of information shared about how these proposals have been uh, negotiated at the table. And I'm sorry, parents, I've not been able to send a reply to every email for a couple of reasons. What happens in mediation is a confidential matter. Information is not supposed to be shared. Um, but of course, information does get out as we have to share it with, with many in our, in our organizations. Um, so we've got a lot of work to do in terms of how, again, can we find alignment on those areas that we agree? And what can we as organizations you know, agree to settle with the remaining open proposals. If you're referring to normally we count these for snow days or cold days, um, I believe we have four left in our calendar. I think we've just had one this year. Um, uh, but beyond that, again, we, uh, the most important thing that we do right now is, is get the contract settled. Of course, those days are important, and uh, there's a lot of really important symbolic things that happen in the school district this time of year. For our seniors, it's the last time that they're seniors in high school, the first and last time. Um, so we've got to think about many of those requirements. Of course, there are state tests and things of that nature, so it is a huge, huge impact on what normalcy is for the school calendar and the school schedule not to mention the inconveniences it, it puts on everyone in the city. I have to say that uh, the city of St. Paul, our faith-based partners, our community partners and organizations um, have just been incredible um, in opening their doors and, and helping us in these trying times as well. I want to thank them.
So yes, today, today all employees who are not members of SPFE are expected to uh, to um, show show up to their to their work site to their to their jobs. Yes. Yes. Yep, and we have information on our website that shows as things go that status changes. Um, you know, we are not going to be able to be open for regular services for very long if our students aren't back where they belong. And then how does the strike affect the pay of the I'm gonna ask Executive Director McCarty to join us. Good morning, Kenyatta McCarty, Executive Director for Human Resources. So I'll address the first question. For SPFE members that um, are participating in the strike, they will not receive pay during those days. As far as benefits, um, they would receive benefits through the end of this month. And if the strike continues on beyond March, then the benefits would end. Good morning, Jackie Turner, Chief Operations Officer for St. Paul Schools. Correct, um, Kids Space will start on Thursday. Um, although we have our community partners have stepped up and um, they are open as of today. Um, community partners such as the Y, Boys and Girls Club, um, St. Paul Parks and Recreation, Libraries. But St. Paul Public Schools Kids Space will start at 8.30 on Thursday. We wanted to be able to allow at least a couple of days to be able to give um, staff time for um, training and for parents to register and sign up for buses to begin able to operate and be able to have um, students safely picked up and dropped off at the spaces. So we felt that in order to be prepared, we needed to be able to have two days in order to do that. We are um, doing extremely well um, as of today. We um, have between our regular Discovery Club as well as our kids space, we have close to about 1,500 signed up as of yet this, yet this morning. Registration just started just a couple of hours ago. Um, we have served over 100 meals this, um, just for breakfast this, this morning. Money is certainly the, the driver of many of the proposals. There are language items as well and, and, and things that change uh, procedures and, and policies of, of how we operate as a district as well. Uh, but many times those things work out. Yes, there's a, there's a lot of money in the proposals that I spoke of um, in terms of what our educators brought forward to us. And um, if I could, if I had the uh, new dollars to invest in each of them, it, it would make it much easier. Yes. Are you uh, working up with the legislature at this point? I mean, is this, are you bringing the case up to the capital now to say this is what happens if uh, you know, you don't make the public school system in particular add some urgency to the parent tax money? I think that We've been no strangers, educators, St. Paul Public Schools and organizations that I'm involved in and being at the Capitol, um, making sure that they're aware that we are underfunded by $80 million as a school district, uh, which is absolutely unacceptable. Um, it is sad to think that an action like this to bring extra attention to it is the course that we're on right now. Um, this will definitely set a different tone at the Capitol, I believe the last strike in the state of Minnesota was early 2000s, mid 2000s. And, um, you know, this is nearly unprecedented in our state. And I, I do know that many other districts are struggling just like us, some, some far worse. 
And it is, a, it is an extreme challenge that puts a lot of stress on folks who really want to come into a community and provide the very best for, for kids every day. And I don't doubt that for anyone in, in our school district. I think that a national movement is, is something that is aligning um, the challenges that many of our states have. Um, you have seen in the last two years, really, even beyond, there have been state walkouts. You know, there have been other strikes in large districts. Uh, there have been strikes of, of one day to, you know, to two weeks. So um, there, there is definitely momentum in terms of uh, what educators believe students deserve um, in terms of their education. and. It's something that has obviously caught the attention. I mean, my email box and people who are looking at St. Paul and St. Paul Public Schools right now uh, changed at 3 in the morning. I think this work is incredibly difficult without the, you know, what we're working on right now, negotiating this contract. Um, I think the difficulty is when you take away what consistency means, what people can expect day to day, and, and you're changing schedules, and that uncertainty is something that is, that is up in the air. Uh, to me, that's the greatest difficulty we're navigating right now. Um, as Chief Turner and others came up here, we're responding to you and giving you feedback on things that we haven't had to do in St. Paul Public Schools. Uh, for us to take two days, we are rewiring a whole new district in, in some ways, in terms of transportation, food, sites, students, parents registering at different sites. Um, so it, it definitely um, is, a, is a difficult time. And, you know, I think any efforts that we can do in public education to increase the amount of support that we get to fund some of the very proposals that are uh, very local and immediate uh, to the people representing SPFE and all of St. Paul Public Schools uh, would, would be of great help. Allow me to clarify. I'm right here right now. Um, we are in mediation because we still have a mediator from the Bureau of Mediation Services assigned to mediating our contract. Uh, when we schedule the meet is always a mutual decision. Um, so we do not have a, we do not have a meeting currently um, as of you know, the last few hours as we ended last night's into the morning session. Um, the, the district did, we did offer binding arbitration uh, to SPFE and, and they did reject it, which is a condition for them to invoke a strike as well. Um, so they, they did reject it. We didn't have much conversation about that, any conversation really about that. Thank you.